I want to share with all of you today my favorite topic that I would like to teach you this morning. My favorite message that is Holy Communion. Amen. Why Holy Communion is my favorite topic? Because Holy Communion reminds me of Lord's victory and Satan's defeat at the cross. Amen. That's what happened. It reminds us of who we are in the Lord. It reminds us of what Jesus accomplished on the cross. Amen. So let's see Holy Communion in detail today. We take Sunday after Sunday Holy Communion in our church. Why we take Holy Communion every Sunday regularly? Why we encourage you to take Holy Communion at your home? What is the reason? What happened when the person took first time Holy Communion in the Bible? Whenever there is a mention of a phrase, of a word about a topic in the Bible for the first time, we need to go back and study and see the significance of that explanation. The first time Holy Communion is mentioned in the book of Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14 is the book where first time it shows us how the Holy Communion procedure was done. We see in Genesis chapter 14 that a king of Salem called Melchizedek, the priest of most high God, he comes to meet Abraham with bread and wine. First time the mention of bread and wine, Holy Communion, we see in Genesis chapter 13, chapter 14. In Genesis chapter 14, the king of Salem who is this king of Salem? The king of Salem, when they have studied, they have done research, they couldn't find where is his geographical area, what is his ancestry, where is he from. They just got to know he is the beginning, he is the end. His geographical area is the whole universe. Amen. The king of Salem is king of Shalom. That means king of peace. Amen. This king of peace, Melchizedek, that is a high priest of most high God, comes to Abraham with holy communion and he gives Abraham this holy communion. And after Abraham takes bread and wine, what is the blessing this high priest pronounces on Abraham? The moment Abraham communes the holy communion, he communes Melchizedek is shadow of Jesus Christ. So he communes with Jesus. The moment he communes with Jesus, he receives the greatest blessing ever heard. Melchizedek, the high priest of God, blesses Abraham and pronounces this blessing. He says, Abram, Abram, you are the possessor of heaven and earth. Amen. The Melchizedek gives this blessing to Abraham, saying, Abraham, you are the possessor of heaven and earth. So Abraham receives this blessing after taking Holy Communion. So what do we learn? When we take Holy Communion, we get the blessing from our high priest who is seated on the right hand side of the Father. His arms are stretched wide open to bless you this morning when you are taking Holy Communion to tell you the same blessing because if you are in Christ, you are the seed of Abraham and you become Possessor of heaven and earth. Amen. What is the possessor of heaven and earth? What is the blessing of Abraham? I will bless you and make your name great. Amen. In you, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Amen. You are blessed to be a blessing. So when you commune with the Lord, you become part of that blessing. And this blessing is pronounced on you. And after these things, what happened? The Bible says in Genesis chapter 15, verse 1, it begins after these things. What are those after these things? We have to go back to Genesis chapter 14. Genesis chapter 14 talks about Melchizedek coming and giving the Holy Communion. And Abraham giving his tithe. He gave his tithe to Melchizedek. And he says, I have raised my hand to the Lord. 
to the king of Sodom. He says, I have raised my hand to the Lord. Let no man say he made me rich. It is God who has made me rich. After these things, in Genesis chapter 15, after Holy Communion, after the act of worship of he giving his offering, after he took Holy Communion and he mingled with the Lord, he communed with the Lord, the Bible says, the word of the Lord came to Abraham. The word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision and God said, I am your shield and ex your exceedingly great reward. When God gives this word, Abraham says, God, what will you give me? You see that I am childless and my servant Eliezer of Damascus is going to inherit my property. At that time, the Bible says in verse 4, the word of the Lord came to Abraham. God knows what you're going through. God knows your deep best pain. God knows your deepest wound, your hurt, your past and what you are longing for. God knows it. Amen. Abraham didn't pray for it. He had not asked for it. But the word of the Lord came concerning what concerns Abraham. If it matters to you, it matters to God. Amen. It matters to God. Amen. So the Bible says the word of the Lord came to Abraham after taking Holy Communion. What did God say? God said, not Eliezer will be your heir, but the one who comes out of your own body shall be your heir. And the Lord took Abraham, come out and see stars look up and see the sky and God said to Abraham can you count these stars if you can count count them so many shall be your generation amen God not just gave him a promise God gave him a vision because whenever he will doubt his promise he was able to imagine he would go out of his house and he will see the sky and say my descendants are going to be as countless as stars in the sky so your promise from God should become so real it should become a picture in front of your eyes you need to imagine you need to visualize what God has promised you when you visualize when you see that vision when you are able to see the promise through the eyes of faith, that's when it becomes reality in your life. So Abraham received the promise from Melchizedek that he is possessor of heaven and earth after he took Holy Communion. And the greatest miracle that he has been waiting for 99 years, the promise word comes to Abraham that you will receive your own hair coming out of your own body after Holy Communion. So that means Holy Communion brings our greatest victory in life. Amen. If you remember in the story of Exodus, when Israelites were struggling under the slavery of Pharaoh, Moses goes to Pharaoh and says, let my people go. But Pharaoh do not let them. He never lets them to go. Pharaoh holds his people. God sends not one or two, nine plagues at a stretch and Pharaoh is still not convinced to let his people go. At that time, God says, the final plague is coming. The final plague, the tenth plague is coming. What is the tenth plague? At the tenth plague, that was the plague of the First striking of the firstborn. Why did that happen? Because they had not participated in the Passover lamb. The Passover lamb was first time instituted in the book of Exodus. So God gives him this institution, this instruction saying you have to take this holy communion. You have to take this bread. You have to do this as a lasting ordinance to the generations to come. When they take this Holy Communion, that is when their greatest deliverance comes to them. When they took Holy Communion, immediately Pharaoh lets his people go. And all these two million people who took communion, they came out with silver, with gold, and none were feeble. The Bible says they were not sick. They came out with so much of prosperity immediately from slavery into prosperity. 
after taking holy communion immediately being in bondage they have come to deliverance immediately struggling being in un under someone having this pain this sickness the bible says they were none feeble they received their healing they walked through all these people through the red sea how did they walk how did they run how many miles is the red sea they got the power to go through the hand of the lord swept them through the red sea 2 million people that's what happens when we take holy communion amen what you are waiting for i want to encourage you this morning take holy communion knowing for sure you are going to receive your greatest victory your greatest healing your greatest breakthrough your bondage will be broken because when you take holy communion you're reminding satan of his defeat on the cross and your victory in christ amen so you are telling him who he is and what is his future amen so take holy communion when you raise the holy communion cup you're raising your victory cup amen so every sunday when we raise holy communion no for sure you are raising your victory cup we know the end result it is a good fight because at the end you win amen shall we read that portion in the book of exodus chapter 12 verse 8 to 11 then they shall eat the flesh on that night roasted in fire with unleavened bread and with bitter herbs they shall eat it do not eat it raw nor boiled at all with water but roasted in fire its head with its legs and its entrails you shall let none of it remain until morning and what remains of it until morning you shall burn with fire and thus you shall eat it with the belt on your waist your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand so you shall eat it in haste it is the lord's supper why did god say roast the lamb roast it and eat and whatever is left you burn it you burn it and roast on it you eat and also give it to your children give it to everybody it 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 has beautiful meaning the lamb over here signifies jesus what happened on the cross on the cross the wrath of god the judgment of god came and fell on jesus and that wrath tried to burn jesus the anger the condemnation the judgment all the punishment that the entire world ever deserved came on jesus it tried to consume but jesus was still hanging there he got completely roasted with the wrath of god the anger of god came but he was not consumed amen he was not consumed he was still hanging there until he said i shall commit my spirit into thy hands this is one offering that was not consumed by the wrath of god this is the perfect offering the perfect lamb of god that's why it says burn it roast it because he shall endure it he shall sustain it he is the only one who can sustain it he has the power he has the purity to sustain it because he is a lamb with no blemish he is a lamb with no sin amen jesus christ the lamb of god so we rem they remembered him and they took that communion today we remember him what he has done and that's why the bible says do this in remembrance of him we remember him every time we take communion the moment they took what the bible says they came out they came out from the greatest bondage that they were ever in and the lord had commanded eat it with your belt on with your sandals on when will you when will you wear your belt or sandals when will you be ready when you want to go out amen when you want to go out that means god was telling be prepared be ready for your greatest victory amen so when you are taking communion this morning be ready with your belt on with your shoes on to come out of your poverty to come out of your weakness to come out of your depression to come out of your past failures to come out of the bondage of satan be ready to walk out today 
from the church set free delivered after taking holy communion when you know this communion is the greatest vitamin it is the greatest medicine how can we stop taking it how can we stop giving it to our children how can we stop touching this communion the bible says jesus took this communion that night the lord's supper we call it as that night when jesus took communion he was betrayed by judas go to that verse corinthians 1st corinthians 11:23 for i received from the lord that which i also delivered to you that the lord jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread jesus took bread jesus took communion and it says that night he was betrayed the table where jesus was breaking the bread the table where he was giving the communion to his disciples at the same very table there was satan seated in the form of judas but there was also the lord almighty god the father was at the table in the form of bread and wine amen so it was looking like after jesus took holy communion he had to undergo the greatest trial of his life being separated from the father it was so difficult it never happened in history but he had to go through this greatest trial in his life but then after he took communion it empowered him to go through that 12 hard hours after that what he had to go through the trial the scourging the beating the nailing the crucifixion it empowered holy communion empowered him to go through it was looking for the world as defeat but you and i know what it says in colossians chapter 2 verse number 14 and 15 it says that he has made the public spectacle of principalities darkness and the rulers of this world he made them a public show nailing it to them on the cross amen so when jesus went on the cross he got the greatest victory for mankind for you and for me because the devil was forever defeated by dying on the cross he defeated the power of death forever amen so today when you are taking holy communion if you do not see immediate miracle if you do not see your bank balance changed immediately if you do not see the pain on your body is not gone the pain in your leg has not left do not be shaken just believe see through the eyes of faith for sure you are going to receive your greatest victory exactly what happened to abraham what happened to israelites what happened to jesus the same miracle is going to happen to you your greatest victory is ahead of you because our god does not change he is the same yesterday today and forevermore amen religion has robbed us from taking holy communion they say if there is sin in your life do not touch holy table do not take holy communion what are you saying if there is any sin in your life there is sin in our blood there is sin in every cell of our body then how can we be without taking holy communion that is way our loving father the only place in the bible where it says the father ran he runs towards the sinner with arms wide open and he gives yes and he invites us for this greatest exchange offer he says come with your sickness and receive my healing come with your poverty and receive my prosperity come with your depression and receive my joy come with all your weakness and receive my strength come with your sin and receive my righteousness amen this is the only hope for a sinner a sinner must commune with his savior
Amen. When sinner communes with his Savior, all his weakness vanishes. All his guilty stains are washed in the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen. And when sinner comes to his Savior, his blood is mingled with the blood of Jesus. His weakness becomes now the strength of his master. He gets the greatest communion ever that he can have. He unites with his Savior and he is transformed from glory to glory. Amen. Run to it. Take it daily at your home. Do not say, how can I take communion in my home? There is no pastor. The Bible says, you are kings and priests before the Lord. So at home, you can take communion, believing that the Lord, your high priest, is present right there in midst of you to bless you, to grant you all your desires. Amen. I want you to go with me to 1 Corinthians Chapter 11, verse number 24 and 25, what the Lord said. He had, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me of me. The Bible says, do this in remembrance of me. The Bible does not say, do this in remembrance of your past. The Bible does not say, do this in remembrance of your sin. The Bible does not say, do this in remembrance of your sickness. The Bible says, do this in remembrance of him. That's why it says, discern the Lord's body. We have to discern his body because in his body, when he took those lashes, when he took that scourging, when he took that beating, every sickness that you can name, BP, diabetes, cancer, depression, tumor, any disease, every sickness was laid on his back. He took that suffering. He took that pain. That is why in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, it says, by his stripes we were healed amen we were healed so when you take communion receive your healing which was accomplished for you 2000 years ago you might ask pastor just by taking a wafer and wine how my situation is going to change how my body is going to be transformed it is not just a wafer and a wine. It is the body and the blood of Jesus. When you are taking communion, you are releasing your faith into the finished work of the cross. You are releasing your faith that Father God sent his only begotten son to die for you. He suffered for you. He took your pain. He took your shame to liberate you, to set you free. You are putting your faith in his work, as you release your faith by taking communion, you are responding to what grace has made available for you through faith. Now you receive it. You receive all the blessings, all the healing that was accomplished, that was given to you 2,000 years ago by our Savior. Amen. So now, as you take this communion, you are no longer a sinner. You do not have the blood of your parents. You do not have DNA of your parents. You are spiritually the offspring of God Almighty. You become sons and daughters of God. You have the same DNA of Christ Jesus. Amen. The sinner must commune with his Savior. As he continues to take communion, as he's mingling with Lord Jesus, his blood is mingling, communing with the blood of Jesus and his DNA is transformed. He no longer has the DNA of his parents. He has the DNA of Christ. He becomes the son. We become the sons and daughters of God. Amen. And our blood is transformed. Our heredity, our genetics, our sickness, everything is changed. The blood is transformed. Now, even a mosquito sits on you. 
and bites it will fly away saying there is power in the blood there is power in the blood because you have the blood of jesus amen there is power in the blood it removes every disease from the roots from genetics disorder every sickness is removed your weakness is transformed into his strength that's why it says i can do all things through christ who strengthens me as you take your communion as you commune with the lord you become one with him now you are in him and he is in you all yours is his and all his is yours amen that's way it says in the book of first corinthians chapter 10 verse number 16 this is the cup of blessing as you take communion you get into the covenant and all his becomes yours and you receive this cup of blessing this cup of blessing gives you rights to the covenant this cup of blessing gives you all the healing all the blessing all the curses ever spoken on your life all the curses you ever deserve is broken because now you receive this cup of blessing that's way at the last supper when jesus took the bread and the wine he broke the bread he gave thanks and broke the bread and he said take this this is my body eat and he said take this this is my blood and drink and do this in remembrance of me every time you take this communion you remember it is the cup of blessing you remember that every tongue that has raised against you is refuted by the lord you remember every generation curse has been turned into a blessing because you have partaken the cup of blessing amen